<clears throat> Describe this place for me. What does it look like? Well, it's a it's a valley. There's a mountain hilly range on the left and a large rock rising on the right hand side. Mm-hmm. And in the meadow there's like aspen trees and bushes other types of trees, mm-hmm. blue sky, and puffy clouds. Very good. So as you look at this beautiful landscape, I'd like for you now to focus on the observer, the one who is looking. Ah, like Do a you... man, like he's uh, wearing pioneer clothes. Pioneer <laughs> clothes, mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got like a buckskin top, some type of hat, mm-hmm. blonde hair. Hmm. So look down at your feet. What do they look like? They're moccasins. Moccasins. Mm-hmm. And the pants are uh, like deer hide or some hide as well. Mm-hmm. Take a look at your hands. Are you holding anything in your hands? There's a bow. And in the right hand, and the left hand is holding the strap of... Uh, like a quiver mm-hmm. around the shoulder. So let's find out a little bit about what you're doing here today. I'm looking out over the meadow, and I think I'm in search of a, taking a break in my hunting mm-hmm. and scanning the horizon. What do your, What is it that you're scanning for? Well, first it's appreciation for the sun, for the nice weather taking note of the birds, looking at the the, f- uh, the grasses in the trees, noting the insects, keeping the ears keen to any sounds, smells in the air, mm-hmm. ultimately well, looking to mm-hmm. hunt something. Good. So let's find out a little bit more about this day. I'd like for you now to move forward and see what happens on this beautiful day. I'm in, a, in front of, of a campfire. It's a sandy uh, spot. And I'm leaning, sitting down leaning against a, like a rock. And I'm staring into the fire and I'm eating, looks like rabbit maybe. Mm-hmm. Just enjoying the moment thankful for the rabbit. Look around you. Are you by yourself or is there something else with you there? I'm by myself. It's nighttime. It's Mm -hmm. cool. Stars are beautiful. Um, I don't see any indication of anyone for many miles. Mm -hmm. And what do you call yourself? Boone. Boone. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Very Ah, good. Boone. So Boone... Let's close the scene. Let's go now to a scene in that same lifetime that impacted your life. I had a wife, a woman companion who passed. <laughs> she was a, a, a say, dark blonde hair, mm-hmm. almost brunette. Mm-hmm. She had a bonnet. She had a long dress. Uh, puffy sleeves. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're in a cabin. Uh, we stayed in the cabin. There's a stream nearby. Beautiful location. But she's uh, she's standing next to me on, on the porch. Mm-hmm. And I am looking at her. I have some concern. Tell me what your concern is. Well, she's 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 indicated she's not feeling well. Mm-hmm. So I'm listening to to her and I'm gauging her wellness. So I'd like for you to look at your wife's eyes, the eyes of the window to the soul. Do you recognize the soul? Yes. We've had a ex- lifetime in like Washington D.C. Mm-hmm. We were married in that lifetime as well. Mm-hmm. 
she wasn't well in that lifetime either. Tell me how that feels. Well, it's sad to leave somebody or have someone leave you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sad to not be able to take care of them to wellness. So there's a similarity in these lifetimes here. Mm -hmm. So tell me what that life in similar lifetimes has done. I feel like I'm alone again. So mm -hmm. once she leaves, it's a feeling of ab abandonment. Mm -hmm. So it's an opportunity for me to be grateful for our lives together. Be grateful for the experiences. Mm -hmm. And be okay of allowing that life life pattern to life agreement to come to an end. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's close that scene, Boone, and let's continue in that lifetime to another moment that impacted you. Be there now. Hmm. Oh, there's a coyote. Or a wild animal mm -hmm. in the in the bush brushes nearby. There's a I'm 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 alerted. I'm around the fire. A fire mm -hmm. could be the same fire, but I know there's an animal nearby. I just can't see it yet. Sounds like a coyote. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling there? I'm nervous. I'm I'm weary. I have my bow. So I'm backing up, slowly moving, listening to no noises. What happens next? Well, it comes near. And I'm not able to sh shoot it. With my bow, I have a knife, but I'm not able to get the knife. Uh, it it bites me on the uh, uh, calf, my mm -hmm. left calf, <clears throat> in a skirmish. And we tussle around a little bit. And he's over on top of me now. I'm laying down, mm -hmm. bearing its teeth at me, my face and my neck. <clears throat> Separate yourself now. It, uh, it kills me. Mm -hmm. Separate yourself from that. And look back at that experience. Connect with that coyote. The coyote's seen me before mm -hmm. and has been had been watching me. It's hungry. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I I think I've come near its its den too close. Mm -hmm. Do you connect with that soul of that coyote? Yes, we experience a, a lifetime. Uh, I'm I'm a different lifetime, and I'm Indian. I'm a man. Uh, coyote is a wolf, mm -hmm. and we have a greeting, a communication. We greet one another at a distance, like a nod, like we recognize each other, mm -hmm. uh, like a little res respect thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I don't kill it or anything, mm -hmm. and it doesn't kill me. Let's see if there's some sort of a soul agreement there with both of you. He's, he watches, he helps, he warns me of impending uh, activity mm -hmm. in that one particular life. Um, he's there to help keep me uh, in appreciation and grounded to Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the nature, the beauty of nature, the danger of nature, the lessons of nature. Uh, he laughs. He laughs at me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does that spirit animal continue to be in the lifetime of Charlene? There's a there's a there's a cat. Mm -hmm. um, my current cat. Mm -hmm. uh, she's she's talkative. She lets she, she just lets me know she's there. Mm -hmm. She talks to me. I don't know what she's saying. Uh huh. Well, let's connect with Sheba. Let's connect with Sheba now. Allow yourself to connect mind to mind and soul to soul. Let's find out why this soul has continued to follow Charlene throughout the lifetimes. Uh, like a teacher, like uh, opportunities to remember, opportunities to experience and share. Uh, I guess like a like a coach, mm -hmm. uh, a healthy mentor perhaps, but to help keep the connection to nature uh, viable. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Is there anything else that we need to know from Sheba or the spirit animal? Spirit animal is, is going to be around a long time, a uh, totem, a necklace. And a honor of that appreciation would be nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. As also what, as a reminder for myself. In what form should this totem be? Uh, it can be made out of bone. It mm -hmm. could be a necklace, mm -hmm. uh, um, a figure of the head, mm -hmm. a carving. Yes. Yes. Very good. Very good. <clears throat> so we come here today to now find out more information about the Akashic Records, the Ego. I'd like for you now to go back to that time when you were able to access that information effortlessly. I'm going to count from five back to one, and when I get to number one you will be with your guides getting that information. Five, going back in time now. Four, time and space. Three, allowing the images to come. Two, and one. Be there now. We're outside the building uh, that's known as the library. We are uh, gathering around uh, an area outside the building that has some benches, that has a walkway to that building and other buildings. One person is s standing with, with one foot resting on the bench. It's like a white stone bench. Mm -hmm. uh, merriment, laughter, uh, joy, fullness mm -hmm. in his demeanor. Mm -hmm. I believe I'm sitting at the other end of the bench. There is uh, one or two or three uh, beings, uh, sp sp spirit guides or masters, spirit guides, masters, teachers, mm -hmm. in the area as well. So I pose the question, and there's a discussion. A light discussion. Mm -hmm. What is the question that you pose today? Pose question about the life, the life, a life, mm -hmm. uh, the life, um, and roses. So the roses with the thorns, roses with the red petals. And it's synonymous with life, and how it, the rose symbolizes life. Uh, 
with the petals, with the thorns, with the leaves, with the smell, the attraction, the aroma. Mm -hmm. And the discussion is regarding is an instruction to me regarding those similarities. An example of how the rose can symbolize life. Mm -hmm. And how is this rose going to be a symbol into the lifetime of Charlene? Aside from seeing the roses or flowers or anything that's living and growing, the, in, the interaction with nature brings back the the realization, appreciation of the creation mm -hmm. and the first-hand experience. Good. So let's find out a little bit about these individuals that are with you. <coughs> Who are they? Uh, teachers, mm -hmm. masters, the ones that are standing to the right my spirit guide is the one that has his foot on the bench. Mm -hmm. uh, they're dressed in, well, he's dressed in white garment, yep. long garment, like a robe. Mm -hmm. The other ones also have robes, but they have uh, more of shoulder looking pads or mm -hmm. puffiness mm -hmm. and more ornate uh, robes. Do they come in different colors? Right now, it's pretty much everything is white. Mm -hmm. Right here. What do you look like? Um, I would say it's like a toga. Like a toga. Uh, similarity, but it, it's not a robe. Um, calf length. It's uh, with a belt. Mm -hmm. um, I would say like cotton even. Mm -hmm. um, and that is white as well. More Gold. of a simple. Like a what? A simple attire. Yes. Very simple. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what does your uh, body seem like? Body seems like a young man. Mm -hmm. Nice calves. Mm -hmm. uh, even sandals. Good. So let's find out a little bit more about what you do with these masters and teachers. What is your role in this place? I'm learning from them. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk a lot. There's a lot of discussion. There's a, a lot of discussion of examples of situations or experiences either they myself or others have uh, experienced mm -hmm. and we talk about the comparison of the dynamics of life life experiences mm -hmm. and what's best for the souls what are better pathways better pros and cons of different paths. Mm -hmm. Good. So I'd like for you now to progress through times with these teachers and now see yourself when you are working with the Akashic Records. I pour through books. I pour through constant energy mm -hmm. I pour through manuals everything's energetically constructed mm -hmm. so I go from books to books I compare the association of energy on systems mm -hmm. how do you absorb this information in one aspect, I engage with the books mm -hmm. and follow 
those path lines of energy with other books. So it's a hands-on kind of reading of the records that has con that are constantly being updated. Mm -hmm. I have an area that I actually create. It's almost like a sanctuary, but I, I create, I've created, I've created a world. Tell me about that world. It's, uh, it's encased in, in a structure of almost some stone-like kind of encasement uh, that allows me to infuse it with energy, infuse this world with energy. It's a watery world, it's like blue, and there are little, there are black specks in on the world, and I poked my finger into the planet and move in those black things moved away from my finger and I and I'm sorry I poked the planet mm -hmm. to just dis I disturbed those black things now this planet is this something that you created yeah I, I created it and it's in this framework structure so I'm 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 doing an experiment. I'm 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 exercising, demonstrating the effects of energy systems, how they how they are compatible or not mm -hmm. within this world. So this place where you're learning, that we call the library, it teaches you how to create worlds. Well, we all can create worlds. Mm -hmm. This is just the one that I've created to see how different energy, different energies impact this world. Mm -hmm. So let's see what kind of energies you're using. Well, it starts off with a question. So a question is, what happens if I infuse or if I add blue energy to this world. Mm -hmm. But I have to be aware of what that blue energy could create. Mm -hmm. And you observe it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this soul saw green energy during a session, and she realized that she could raise it at will. Is this green energy used for healing? or something else. Take a look and see. Create that green energy now. See how it affects your world. What happened? The green energy is connected to Mother Earth. Mm, okay. So when you activate <laughs> When you acknowledge, when I acknowledge the green energy, I give gratitude for it. I say thank you. Mm -hmm. And then, with the focused intent of allowing it to amp up or activate With combined with my focus intent, I'm able to send it outwardly to wherever it needs to go to heal, to mm -hmm. to calm, to simply send love mm -hmm. to wherever it needs to go. Is there anything that Charlene should be doing differently? regarding using this energy when uh, when she starts to uh, provide uh, enhancements to this process mm -hmm. for example even a dance mm -hmm. dance on the grass uh, mm -hmm. uh, 
hugging trees while activating this energy. Um, it, it provides new characteristics for the energy to be able to perform. Good. Good. Now I'd like for you to go ahead and make a connection between this information and the higher self of Charlene so that she can tap this information at will. Can we do that? Yes. Very good. Is there a suggested step-by-step -step process to access this information from the Akashic Records? The steps can be as quickly and ease, easily performed, especially when the heart and mind are cleaned, cleansed. Mm -hmm. So Charlene sometimes works hard at meditation and takes up a lot of time or gives it a lot of time. However, another route is to be cleansed, mm -hmm. be clean in the white light, and simply like opening a window, the information is accessible. Mm -hmm. How can she trust that this is accurate, what she's receiving? Just like exercising all things practice mm -hmm. is important so with focus intent on the cleaning and perhaps even the window mm -hmm. in different elements and feeling that resonation mm -hmm. getting aware becoming familiar remembering the types of different resonation associated with the cleanliness, the meditation, the heart's intent, and the information coming through. It can be a repeatable, reliable process that she can do to make the connection stronger as well. Mm -hmm. Can we take her through that exercise now? I want you to allow her to see herself beginning to do a reading. And let's take her through that exercise as she sits before someone. When she sits in front of someone, there's the prayer that can include the cleaning, prayer of protection, prayer of love, the prayer of appreciation of what is at that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, appreciation of the person in front of her, appreciation of herself, of course the records and us, the team. So that's a little ritual, if you will, mm -hmm. a process. Yes. And the, the readings for others, she should practice more on herself for a while before reading for others, only for the fact of the the feeling, the vibration that she receives. So that when she sits in front of someone, she can check for this vibration, check for the resonation. Mm -hmm. And that too is a process, so she'll she'll learn that as well. Good. Now this information that she is accessing, this Akashic record, is this a construct or creation? Created perhaps by a different race or group of races? What is this library? Who created it? It's a... Yes, it's an energy construct. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it's created by a large race So long ago, can't can't even fathom just how long ago. Mm -hmm. 
but it's utilized by many races. Some races, uh, as you may know, don't utilize it because they don't have the capability, uh, perhaps a soul capability. Mm -hmm. They have a consciousness, but But don't have the soul capability, and by that I mean requ requirements. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the intent is different as well. Yes, yeah, so it is a construct of energy. Mm -hmm. And most people, when they go to this library, see the gardens, see the buildings. Where is this? It's a location that is accessible for the benefit of learning, mm -hmm. especially for the benefit of incarnations. So one can learn, get an education mm -hmm. of the possibilities in the contracts, associations with other souls, etc., etc. But it's a it's a location that spiritually is separate from perhaps other schools mm -hmm. other domains of soul groups and families does the soul know how to get to this library every new soul has to be shown mm -hmm. uh, but after that it's a f it can be accessed at any time uh, from a soul level mm -hmm. So now that we are accessing this library, Charlene wanted to know what psychic gifts or skills uh, she has. She has them. She has them all if she wants. Uh -huh. What's keeping her from opening up those gifts? She doesn't know. She doesn't trust path as much as she could trust the path that she's on. She feels it's the right path, yes. She feels these things. She kind of wishes there was a street light so she can mm -hmm. see better walking this path, but if she wanted to do the touching of things to get information, she can do that. Mm -hmm. If she wanted to see where a person is along their path, she can do that easily, really mm -hmm. easily. Oh, she can hear. She knows she can channel. But it's just like having too many pokers in the fire. Mm -hmm. It's good to just, it's good to have, to good to focus on less pokers, perhaps. So which poker should we focus on today? The listening. The listening. Yes. All right. So let's put her through an exercise right now of listening. What would you, what lesson would you like to give her today? When she, when she hears humming, when she hums, mm. do the humming. It changes the frequency vibration around her, within her, uh, when she hums. When she hears the humming, she can take note of the external changes and make the associations or collaborations, connections, with that, meaning why it's happening, where it's happening, mm -hmm. how does, how are things changed, are things more vivid, mm -hmm. uh, are new things in the sights, are things illuminated, what things are illuminated, how does it feel from the feet to the hands mm -hmm. to the heart. So she's using it like a honing device. Similar to what a, a bat or a dolphin or something would use. 
If she uses the humming, it changes the frequency, it bounces back to her. Yes, but it's not so much the hearing. Mm -hmm. The humming is the vibration. Mm -hmm. Good. So I'd like for you now to show her how that works. When she walks, she's walking, when she's driving mm -hmm. even, if she puts focus or attention to the pairing of what she's seeing being illuminated and any feelings, humming, vibrations, she'll be able to see where their activity is alive, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So the for example, the trees might be greener or brighter. Yes. Pathways, grasses might be darker, greener, brighter. So noticing these things, she could go to these spots mm -hmm. and see and feel and perhaps even actively engage in participating with that energy enhancements. Good. So she, could she use that same enhancement instead of being with a tree be with the person, with the yes, higher self. Yes, and you would consider that advanced work. And mm -hmm. by that, I mean infusing the aura or the energetic field with loving, positive vibrations mm -hmm. and not so much poking her finger into the person's energetic bodies mm -hmm. to stimulate or to affect the bodies, similar to the world that she poked with the black spots. She'll, mm -hmm. s she'll see that. That's not, that's not to her benefit or their benefit. Okay. But she can sit with them. Um... Yeah. And pick it up from them. And disperse, send out ripples of love, so to speak. Very good. What are the other gifts that she can work on besides this one? Well, we know she channels. Mm -hmm. And we thank her for that. We know that she provides assistance help in that regard to people who might be in need. Of course, who might not share the need. Mm -hmm. Charlene will say things that will help them. Good. And she might, uh, she doesn't know why she's saying them sometimes. How doesn't she, need to know. How can she trust in that even more? She has a, a good, she has a fair amount of trust based on the many times that it's happened. Okay. And she has uh, purposely thanked us and purposely has allowed only us to engage with her in that manner. Mm -hmm. Now, by us, do you mean the same team that was with her? Yes. By that bench? Yes. Okay, good. How many are you? F five. Well, five. there's four plus Charlene. Mm -hmm. Are you one group, one soul group? One soul group. As we are known as the elders. Mm-hmm. Charlene is a young, young elder. Mm -hmm. So we, as a soul group, yes. Okay. But Charlene engages with other soul groups mm -hmm. for the sake of learning. Okay, good. Well, she wants to learn a little bit more about the ego. She has lots of questions about the ego. Mm. Are you ready to tell her about that? I'm yes. sure the ego has been engaged already today. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. She says she's very grateful for the hard works that the ego has done. She's been protecting her, warning her, and very loudly pro proclaiming the ego's truth. But she remembers that at one time her spirit played with her ego when they were first joined in a physical body. They played at a playground with swings and a slide, and they had fun. And she hummed a song to ease the energetic connection. Is that the humming? That's 
That's the humming. Mm -hmm. So she was shifting the energy. When she was born, yes. So when she was born into this body, mm -hmm. she met with the, what you might call the ego or the personality, the consciousness of this body, mm -hmm. this vessel. So you meet and greet the energy that was, she met and greeted the energy that was in this body and played with it. Mm -hmm. that personality, the ego, if you will. So they <clears throat> had a ease, an easy time integrating the, the spirit, the soul, with the body. Mm -hmm. And the humming helped grow the energy in the nervous system as the baby was being born. So it's like stretching the spinal cord, for example, with energy and love mm -hmm. to help facilitate its growth. Well, is there anything else that she could be doing differently to better the health of her ego? Right now she's sending it lots of love, a lot of hugs, prayer for healing and giving permission to the to rest. Yes, and all of those are just amazing things that she's done mm -hmm. recently, yes. like within the last few years. Mm -hmm. It's uh, incredible healing. It's incredible healing for this, for the ego, mm -hmm. and for the soul's work. Um, yeah. Anything else that she could do to help? Nurture, uh, feed, um, healthy. Um, positive uh, food. Like if a body craved an apple mm -hmm. and ate the benefits, ate the apple and got the benefits, mm -hmm. so too the ego, she, she can give a gift to the ego, like a cake, a mm -hmm. birthday cake, happy birthday. Uh, a gift, a token of appreciation. Mm -hmm. It basically it acknowledge acknowledgments that the ego exists. Mm -hmm. Now there are many that don't like the ego. They talk bad about the ego. That's because the ego might be over, might be given more power, mm -hmm. uh, allowed to have. Allowed to behave, I should say, mm -hmm. with power and and, and it's, its thoughts and words of fear mm -hmm. that power it. The ego would think that it needs to perform with the front and center stage because of the amount of fear that the individual has expressed, felt, mm -hmm. or experienced. So I know that Charlene is going to go out there and start teaching others, helping others. Mm. What can she tell other people about the ego so that they can develop a good nurturing relationship? Ultimately, it's the neutrality. So mm -hmm. a neutral self is so much more healthier than a self who is preoccupied with fear, mm -hmm. for example. So if one can get to the neutral neutrality of self and ego, then things don't stick. Mm -hmm. You know, people's bad thoughts don't stick to you, for mm -hmm. example. Kind of like water on a duck yes. flows off. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because you don't take it personally? Yes. Okay. And you're able to perceive and see with a cleaner vision mm -hmm. when that happens. So how can she help make the teamwork of her spirit and ego more efficient, more powerful? Charlene is, needs to have more fun. Mm. Um, and we've been trying to tell her, showing her opportunities to have fun. She tries, and we give her credit for that, of course. Mm -hmm. So when she's engaging 
a clean, neutral, healthy ego with her attempts to have fun, it's a it's a team activity. So the more team activities, the better. Mm -hmm. Why is it so important for us to have fun? It raises the vibration. So mm -hmm. as you know, when vibrations are raised, you're you bounce back from life's curveballs better. You uh, have a better immune system physically. Uh, you attract things to you mm -hmm. as well. So good stuff. Yes. Good. Now, how does the ego affect the chakras? Huh? Doesn't necessarily have to, but it can. Mm -hmm. How did, how would it affect it? So when you have a balance, a system that's not balanced, mm -hmm. for example, the ego that has is playing with way too much power, yes, it'll throw the balance off, and not just the body, but the energetic bodies, the chakras, chakras are great energy nodes mm -hmm. for the assistance of not only the body but the spirit as well. So anytime you can. Uh, have a healthy ego, neutralize the ego, a calm, clean ego. It allows the other systems to work in their best fashion. Mm -hmm. What about the pineal gland? Mm -hmm. How does it affect the pineal gland? Because we're talking about the connection here. Yes, again, so ultimately, yes, a healthy ego that's clean and neutralized. <sighs> can help prevent imbalance. So even the pineal gland, even the stomach, any organ, physical construct, energy here can be thrown off whack. A healthy ego can help keep things in check. Mm -hmm. So as it's, as its main focus is to help the body, mm -hmm. it can help the body best when it's healthy. So Good. that is that is probably a great goal for many people to to attempt. Mm -hmm. Good. Now she says that um, she's been told that fear of self is holding her back from being all that she can be. What specific fear or fears? Does she need to heal? She wants to be fearless. Yeah, baby steps, right? Mm -hmm. So she has opportunities galore to help mm -hmm. uh, polish the rough areas of her experience and her soul development. So there are a lot of opportunities to address this fear issue, but it's also for her a, a matter of remembering because the fear of, the fear is of the unknown, but mm -hmm. she knows, so it's a matter of her remembering and acknowledging and having awareness and acceptance of those things mm -hmm. to allow that flow to come naturally, as with everybody else has that right. too. Good. Is there any one fear in particular that we need to address today? That fear of not fitting in has mm -hmm. always been there with her. That fear of either being pointed out by the crowd as being different has always been with her. All right, so let's find out where it originated. Let's take her back mm -hmm. through time and space. I want to go ahead and begin going through the archives. And I want you to begin to show her now the images of where the origin was of not fitting in. So in this life, in the kindergarten times, mm -hmm. I can even go back to preschool, being called up to the front of the class mm -hmm. to show off her creation that wasn't as unique as anyone else's, but her and the boy were brought up. And the, 
and and throughout her school years being shown as having had an, an intelligence or IQ that's higher mm-hmm. and being separated from classes mm-hmm. because of that put the spotlight on her but that's all from this life in previous lives it's even in careers uh, being on a, a locomotive train shoveling coal and being s- s- selected or, s- or having a spotlight on on him because of how good he shoveled coal mm-hmm. uh, and it's the ramifications from their responses to her that she didn't really appreciate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how can we fix that now? It's a perception change mm-hmm. to look at it from a different angle. Well, we've seen today that she is asking for abilities to help other people. And when you ask for abilities to help other people, she's going to get a lot of people focusing on her. She's going to be getting a lot of attention. Through these years, her her, her skin has, so to speak, thickened. Mm-hmm. Her perception is from a higher standpoint as it is. Mm-hmm. So the attention, the bad attention she received as a child for being stood out or selected mm-hmm. is from the younger mind. Okay. So she doesn't... While she would love everyone to get along, she knows in this reality not everyone does. So there will always be people in need who would jeer jeer her Mm -hmm. or make snide comments and those are the ones that she will need to send love to for their own development healing etc and that's all she needs to do good so i'd like for you now to show her a magic mirror when she could look in there and see herself into the future see all of those who will be coming into her life Progress that more and more into the future and surround her with these people. Is there any fear of being held back from what she sees? No. Mm -hmm. So can we remove that fear today? Yes. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a rose quartz crystal and I'm going to put that onto your heart. And when I do, I want you to go ahead and begin pulling out all of those fears of standing out and being different. All of those fears that have been holding you back. Those walls that you have built around you to protect yourself of being called names, of not being wanted, of having people point at you for making different choices, for having different ways of living. Pull all that out. You don't need all of that inside of you anymore. And tell me when I have it all. Yes. Let's take it and send it to the universe for healing. And now, let's put into that heart something that would be beautiful, that you can cherish. What would make that heart fearless? Confidence. Put lots of confidence in there. Feel that confidence as it goes in. Understanding that you are a unique individual. There's no one on this planet or in this galaxy. Like Charlene. This is a unique personality that has come here on planet Earth at this time to do the work. And that your pride and your confidence is in being unique. In looking the way you do, speaking the way you do, and accessing knowledge the way you do. And there is no one that can compare to you. So 
By being courageous and confident in yourself, you are allowing to help others by projecting back to them their own confidence. And I'm going to tap your forehead and let's seal all of that confidence in. How does that look now? Yeah. Very good. Very good. Is there anything else you would like to tell her about the ego? She's doing great. Just keep it up. So I'm glad she's there. Mm -hmm. Incorporating that into her development. Very good. Thank you. You know, she has a lot of questions about decisions, about life. She wants to know if a person, a subject, makes a choice, a decision, a change, a manifestation in this particular 3D experience. Does the life or reality of that thing that has not been chosen or not changed continue in the form of the alternate reality with its own energetic strength or energetic signature? Can you show her now a picture which you can see very vividly in her mind as to how this works? That is the web of energy. Mm -hmm. That is uh, the matrix, for mm -hmm. example, for yes. lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. And as you know, everything is connected, interconnected. Yes. The intent and focus of an energy stream made from a person has not only the main stream of energy, but also the filaments, the, the ties to other streams. So it's, if you look at it from an energy perspective, Everything is connected. Some are brighter shreds, threads, some are weaker, thinner shreds, mm -hmm. but it's all connected. So let's say if Charlene were decided right now to make a move to a different state. Let's say she decides to move to Arizona. Would there be a Charlene that continues in New York? Will there be a lifetime that is there, a decision that is not made to move to Arizona? Well, the manifestation of the Charlene in, that stays in New York might not be physical. Mm -hmm. The energy constructs created from that choice would still be present, mm -hmm. not only from her soul's S-O-L-E existence, but from those connections she's made mm -hmm. in New York. So they would both exist and continue in their own manner. Mm -hmm. Yes. So can an alternate reality be impacted by choices and intent made by the soul or body personality in past lives or future lives? Yes, technically. Mm -hmm. Can you show her a picture of how that would work? Yeah, so, for example, the train, the locomotive, shoveling coals into the locomotive, going down the track, and an incident happens or a choice is made. Because the because the soul exists in the future and the past at the same time, relatively, that energy still ripples to those lives. Mm -hmm. So, technically, the answer is yes, but typically, the focus of the energy maintains with the intent of the subject. So, example, the the engine conductor who has made a choice would stay on the left track versus going to the right track. Mm -hmm. So she wants to confirm that an impact from past or future lives can also be made to the prime reality, the here and now. <sighs> Again, yes, technically, mm -hmm. but in actuality, um, 
if you want to examine that further, mm -hmm. you'll see that there are constructs, energy systems mm -hmm. that do have, that do carry on. Mm -hmm. I was told recently, and I was speaking with Charlene about this, that I was told that the excitement I felt, the anticipation I felt in my gut was an actual response to a future event of mine. Charlene doesn't like statistics, but mm -hmm. she's very good at it uh, in regards to that, yes. Yeah, so when you stack up the probabilities mm -hmm. of a certain thing occurring, then that energy will focus outwardly and again to current past future lives uh, relatively speaking yes mm -hmm. and whether that experience is f for the most benefit of the current life mm -hmm. it does have some impact to the other life other lives the reason i ask this is because I know Charlene is asking these questions. Is something happening in her future that she needs to now connect with? Everything's happening <laughs> right now, yeah. future, past. So. But in the future part of linear time, is there an expansion in her soul journey? It's, it's, yes. Yes. And that's the fun, that's the excitement. Mm -hmm. And so as she's preparing for the experiences to come, that the love and intent and the energy uh, will uh, get stronger towards the po probabilities mm -hmm. of that happening. Wonderful. Another question she has is, if we view our past, current, and future lives as three energy systems, sitting on top of each other because they are all occurring at the same time then to confirm would a healing a past life would that instantaneously instantaneously heal a segment of the present or future life or vice versa since we're all living in the moment of now Technically, yes. Mm -hmm. However, please note that the intent or free will, if you will, mm -hmm. also of uh, the other lives mm -hmm. can also impact that healing ability or effectiveness. Mm -hmm. So, can you give her an example? So, in a, for example, just mm -hmm. for its diagram's sake, if a future life was crafted, created, manifested, mm -hmm. for Charlene to be wheelchair bound so that she may receive or give life lessons and learnings, etc. Then in a past life healing of her legs, for example, may not readily, instantaneously, and that's that's the cheesy word there, mm -hmm. may or may not heal those legs of that future life. Okay. To the fashion that she's able to walk around. So in its minute scale there is there are benefits, but mm -hmm. Radical, instantaneous healing is not always part of the uh, the plan. Is that because of our free will to learn that yes. that that lesson? And also the contracts that we've mm -hmm. agreed to prior to incarnation. Okay. Now she's uh, very heavily involved with the Akashic Records, and she would want to know if she could find out about all of these healings and and. Uh, future, past, present lives, if she can inquire to her Akashic Records about this. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Good. Can she do it in a way where she didn't need to be hypnotized to yes. access them? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is this the humming? This is, 
This is the, uh, yes. Um, but more so it's like opening the window. Mm-hmm. Well, when we talk about opening the window, she wants to allow her human eyes and her etheric eyes to see the divine energy flow or patterns more vividly. How can she do that? It can be done. Mm-hmm. Her heart's a tent. It's, it's readily available. But it's one of those pokers on the iron thing. Mm-hmm. When you spread your attention too thin, you don't get the, as much maximum benefit. So she needs to focus on the poker that is going to give her the maximum benefit for helping herself and others. Yes, and that is an identification of resonance and what feels right. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the humming as well. Well, she wants to be able to discern this resonance or frequency of energy. Yes. Where should she feel it? Where can she feel all of this? In her solar plexus. Mm-hmm. Now, we talked about this solar plexus while we were talking before the session, about it being like a honing device, like a GPS. And she says that at one, one time she felt, when she connected with someone, it felt like rocks in there. Hot rolling rocks. Hot yes. rolling rocks. Would you tell her more about this experience and why she felt this? It's almost like a direct line. So mm-hmm. if you pick up a, an old phone that has a line, land lines, yes. you don't get the inference, interference, possible interference that you do like with cell phones. Right. So for her, a direct line that she's experienced many times is the rolling rocks. Mm-hmm. And that is, I would say, is an indication of the activation and the allowance and gratitude positiveness associated with those connections he's had with other people. Mm -hmm. So her experiment with feeling this rolling rock, so the plexus kind of feeling, Mm -hmm. was was spot on. If she uh, wanted to feel that more often, Mm -hmm. then she just needs to put her focus intention and awareness in that spot. Although it initially is uncomfortable for her because it feels like it could feel like an ulcer mm-hmm. if you didn't know more, if you didn't weren't aware of what it was actually. Okay. Well, she wants to be able to help people in the future, give them readings from the Akashic Records. Does she need to connect first with that individual in her solar plexus? <sighs> That would be an, a good ex, uh, exercise. Mm-hmm. However, it's not necessary. Mm-hmm. As all things are connected, the more elements that she does connect to a reading with somebody, mm-hmm. whether it's the connection from the solar plexus or the synchronistic approach mm-hmm. or the humming vibration, mm-hmm. um, the manifestation part, all, all of these tools and other resources can lend to a very good Akashic reading, Mm -hmm. Uh, but the main point is to be clean and clear in the heart's intent. Mm -hmm. So nothing shady. Yes, so it's a matter of protection in that regard as well. Okay, so let's look, so she can't be just tapping into people's Akashic records for the, for the fun of it. She would not do that for the fun of it. Yeah. But in the in in the light of exercising mm-hmm. the practice of accessing Akashic records, mm-hmm. she has realized that the person's intent mm-hmm. also um, plays a vital role. Obviously, because not only do you get the permission, but also you get the person's intent, their wish mm-hmm. to manifest these answers. So it is like a dance also. Yes. Mm -hmm. So both of them have to be willing to dance together. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, is there anything that she needs to use, for example, crystals that would help her in accessing this information? We know that the crystals also hold a lot of information. Yes. So 
she can practice more about holding crystals mm -hmm. to feel the resonance vibration frequency of crystals she's actually heard a crystal speak to her mm -hmm. and she hasn't been able to duplicate that experience again however if she had if she spends more time in that awareness and gratitude of our heart's intent for that experience that happened again, well, the important thing for her, I think, would be to also be ready with good generic questions to mm -hmm. use in speaking with these crystals. So in answer to your question regarding the Akashic Record, Yes, the, the crystals can be utilized to help as an element toward facilitation of Akashic Records, but it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. But good energy is good energy. Good. Now you mentioned something about having generic questions. Is this a good way for her to be practicing at the beginning, to have generic questions to start with, and then she can yeah. kind of move out. Yes, and again, it's a, it's that matter of practicing these things to get an awareness of how it resonates. So, mm -hmm. if she were to ask, for example, one question, generic question, to several crystals, as we were talking in this conversation, mm -hmm. she would be able to see the different resonation or frequency response to her question. Mm -hmm. So that is a learning opportunity. Very good one. Mm -hmm. Good. Any any particular crystals that resonate with her vibration? Her crystal that she worked with was a rose quartz. Mm -hmm. Not all crystals, not all, for example, not all rose quartz crystals are created equally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if she were to focus on rose quartz and do her scientific analysis of her of the responses from from the rose quartz mm -hmm. that will help her in her identification of the resonance mm -hmm. energetic patterns and frequencies of rose quartz for example good well i noticed the rose quartz that she is uh that has on her right now is kind of creeping towards her throat chakra yeah what is the uh, what is it trying to tell Charlene today? It's a matter of that um, love thyself mm -hmm. aspect. Mm -hmm. It's okay to love yourself, and in the healing of the throat chakra, mm -hmm. the energy given there, it's okay to speak your truth mm -hmm. as well. So when she's being asked about this information, or working with someone she needs to be authentic she needs to be and that's one of her of heart yeah the authentic charlene is what she's hoping to to be mm -hmm. so this fear that was holding her back is really the was the fear of being authentic right so as she's developing and growing and experiencing herself you know, it's marvelous to learn more about yourself, for yes. one. Mm -hmm. And two, it's okay to love you as is and as you will become. So that whole gamut of who am I, why am I here, you know, all those questions, mm -hmm. you know, they come from a, a certain point. So in Charlotte's development, that was one of her goals, was just to be her authentic self, just to be. Mm -hmm. And in 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 her time frame now, she's allowing that more and more to, mm -hmm. to happen. Good. Now, I know that Charlene has had other past life regressions where she's seen herself in different lives and in between lives. Can you tell me right now, what is the purpose of this lifetime for Charlene? Why is she here? And what is she, what is her mission? Love. Mm -hmm is her mission love of saying it's okay to love Charlene mm -hmm. it's okay to love 
that breeze crossing your face. It's okay to love, to put your heart on your sleeve, even. Mm -hmm. That's what this, that's what the core of this life Mm -hmm. has been. She experienced a lesson regarding forgiveness, Mm -hmm. which was huge, and that was courtesy of a previous session. Mm -hmm. So she was also able to understand an aspect of love in regards to that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this this has been a, a hard, one of the harder, harder lives, but she has love. Mm-hmm. Love to is, support. That. Love is what she needs to do. Mm-hmm. So why is it that you brought Charlene to this session today? The other one was very different. Mm-hmm. What did you want to tell her in this one? Ultimately, it's all okay. The dance, as was mentioned mm-hmm. previously, um, allows for anything and everything to happen. So it's okay. It's okay. Mm-hmm. And this connection to the higher self, the ego, the team, mm-hmm. it really is. It's, it's for real, so. Mm-hmm. So how can she connect with this higher self part of the team a lot easier without the ego interfering, without telling her that that's not the right way to go? That's a beautiful question. So we're trying to get her to have more fun. And fun raises the frequency. Fun clears away. Raising frequency clears away congestion. Mm -hmm. In congestion, I mean the ego talk, for example, Mm -hmm. the babbling. Yes. So for right now, that would be a huge step for her. So have more fun so that you can get to that vibration. Yes. Good. And once she starts having fun... She'll see her work change. Oh, wow, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, more vividness. Whew. Wow. Mm-hmm. And it's going to open, be wide open. Okay. Well, she wanted to connect with this, with this flow, with this vividness, with being able to see divine energy and patterns more. Will she be able to see this? Yes. Yes, and and even more so, things that she hasn't even fathomed yet. Mm -hmm. Now I know that whenever an energy worker is working, they wanna they wanna go very quickly. They're thirsty for information. They, as I call it, they wanna put their mouth up to the fire hydrant and get all of it in right now. How quickly will this information take for her to absorb? It could happen that quickly. <laughs> However, several life t- lifetimes is probably a better answer. Hmm. So she may it may take her a while to experience what she needs to experience. Yeah, she's not as experienced incarnating in mm-hmm. lives mm-hmm. as other members of her soul group. Mm-hmm. So she's pretty new. Yeah, she's new like fresh off the farm, perhaps. Yeah. I say. Is this her first incarnation on Earth? No, no. Okay. But not as not as uh, experienced as others. Correct. Okay. Good. Is there anything that she needs to learn in this lifetime? Any major lessons? Yes. Right now, it's discernment. Hmm. Yeah, and the humming, the frequency, the resonation will help in that. Good. So she needs to spend more time in the humming phase. Yes. Good. 
Is there anything else that you would like to show Charlene or tell her about or anything else that I haven't asked her today? Her feet Mm -hmm. are a lot of concern Mm -hmm. for her. All right. So we're not... We're not sure why her feet are... What's going on with her feet? She didn't mention her feet. Let's take a look at them. Do a scan on her body. And let's find out what's going on with her feet. What's there? Well, it's a... It's like a purple energy. Okay. All right. So can you identify what this purple energy is? Is it something that she created or something that attached to her? She created it. All right. So let's find the origin of that purple energy. I'm going to count from three back to one. When I get to number one, you will see the source, the beginning of that purple energy. Three, going back in time now. Two, looking for the purple energy. And one. She was a child. Mm-hmm. What's happening? She tried to leave her she tried to her leave family her. Her, mm-hmm. um, her aunt's house mm-hmm. and couldn't get too far <laughs> so what was the purple energy It, um, it was like blockage, blocks to prevent her from getting too far from her, uh, from running away, basically. So she created these blocks herself? She put the blocks there, um, so that she wouldn't entertain thoughts of leaving. Mm Mm-hmm. So let's find out why it is that she continues to have this block. What does she use this block for now? She uses it to remind her to be careful where she steps. Mm -hmm. Don't step too far to the left, too far to the right. And these being careful of stepping, is it in relationships? Right now, it's yeah being highlighted in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, Does she need this block, being that she wants to learn to be authentic? She doesn't need the block. She needs to allow the things to occur as they will. All right. So we can't get rid of that block because she created it. She is. She has the wonderful abilities to create whatever she needs in her life what can we transform this block into something that will help her more love more love very good what is the color of love pink very good so I'd like for you to now to bring in that beautiful light and let's transform the purple into pink begin to love your feet seeing that as you transform this purple into pink this pink allows you to move forward in love to take you in places that you wouldn't have stepped before going beyond your boundaries to help other people as you use this love to step forward, you'll be able to go into people's hearts to help them. As you step forward in this pink light and love, you'll be able to reach places you couldn't reach before. 
reach abilities that you couldn't find before. Removing this block and stepping forward in love, you'll be able to finally open up your heart to receive from your team, from your angels, from your guides, everything that you need to do to step forward and be the person that you came here to be. So tell me how this light looks now in her feet. Pink. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And let's add some joy into that pink. Let's add some fun. Because when you have fun, you'll be able to skip through life. And as she skips through life, she'll bring along all of those that want to skip with her. It makes the world so much a fun place just to be in her presence. So let's take a look at her body and see if there's anything else that we need to address today. No. Wonderful. Is there anything else that you would like to tell her today? No, we're good. Very good. Thank you so much. I'd like to. Welcome back. <laughs> wow. That was different, huh? Yes. Yeah, let me take that quartz from oh. you. How do you feel? Uh, oof. That was nice, huh? That was, that was. Let's excellent. switch. Let's switch. Okay. These so that you can ground yourself now. Let's put some shungite uh, in your hand. So this was quite different than what you experienced before, is it not? Yes. Yeah. What was the difference? Well, the level in, was uh, smooth. Mm. It was. It was smooth. Yeah. It was, no. No jolting. <laughs> it was smooth and yeah. thick. Mm. So interesting. Yeah. So it was definitely. You got all your answers? An opportunity, yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank Is you. this something you want to keep private? You want to share? I'll share whatever. So as you are searching and reading and, you know, your team is really taking you to this place and it's almost like you're there to learn from them. Yeah. But amazing. we are all learning. We're all learning. And the stuff that you were, you were um, learning is, is something that was so important to know about. But you, when you channel mm -hmm. during these things, mm -hmm. in this case, did you? What did you see or experience? Did you channel? Well, I'm always, I'm always. These words always just come to me, you uh -huh. know. Uh -huh. I mean, all. Of the, I mean, especially when it sounds so poetic. I mean, it's it's just coming through. It just, I, I just connect the dots and continue. I do this so much, though. <laughs> you know. Yeah. You I mean, need to replenish yourself. No, but the whole thing, the whole idea is just like you were told about the humming. You know, you get to a point where you just, you get your ego out of the way and you just do it. It's just mm -hmm. doing it. It's not whether, it's not like trying to do it. You just do. Mm -hmm. It just flows. And that was really the beautiful thing that you were, you were told is that by having more fun, by enjoying life more, it puts you in a different vibration. It's like a whole new puzzle that you get to put together. Yeah. And see, when I do these sessions, it's so much fun for me. You know, it, it is a, it's all about fun. It's not work. It's, you're just going with the flow. You're just allowing this knowledge and mm -hmm. this information to come through. So you're being told basically the same thing. When, you, when you're humming, it kind of like shifts your vibration. It was just, you're just given a tool. And you were using that since you were born. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes, ma'am. I can have a hug right okay. now. Oh. <laughs> so that was really awesome. And you are awesome. So tell everybody how it was, you know, why, why you came here first of all, and, and what is it that you wanted to find out? I think Alba's videos, uh, learning from the videos was very uh, impactful yeah. in the learning opportunities. So uh -huh. I wanted to experience this as well mm -hmm. and get anything out that I needed to tell myself uh, yeah. and let other people hear. If and you they, had heavy duty questions. You know, the analytical side of me usually <laughs> you know, and prevails. Ha and do you feel that they were answered correctly? You were given, you were given scenarios and everything. How yeah. did that help? 
the the examples yeah. were, were good. So I was able to you know pair or match yes. uh, what was being said or communicated with an actual example. So that was yeah. And what I loved beneficial. is when you went up to the uh, when you were with your team. Oh. I thought that was beautiful. You know, when you were actually there at that bench and your guide was there and the other teachers were there. Yeah. And you were just kind of like discussing stuff, you know, like, isn't that beautiful? Just out in this garden, this park type of place, and you're just like talking about philosophical yeah. things. Well, no. You know, throwing yeah. around stuff. And yeah, and I think, I think what was cool to experience that was because um, it wasn't like our lives that we yeah. were discussing or anyone's specific lives. It was the relationships and, and philosophies and yeah. what worked and what didn't work and what can we do to yeah. you know, help others. So I thought, I thought that was really interesting. And, yeah. and uh, you know, this is why I said it wasn't about you, but it was, you know. I feel that all of us have teams like that that we go yes. and discuss this with. Yes. You know, yes. because one time, you know, you'll wake up in the morning and all of a sudden uh, you'll, you'll, things will work out. It's like, who did I talk to last <laughs> night? You know, because at night you're going to sleep with, you know, you're going to sleep with a, a, a problem and in the morning it's like, oh, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's almost like you've, you've churned it out with, with your team at night and <coughs> figured it out. Right. And so we're not alone. No, so. not at all. <coughs> so... Um, I know that you had other experiences before. How was the difference between your other past life regressions and this now? I think going into a relaxed state mm -hmm. was like the deluxe <laughs> process uh, compared to what I've experienced before. It was yeah. uh, loving. It was um, a lot of um, power. Mm -hmm. And by power, I mean effect you know, effectiveness. Um, so there's a lot of love there yeah. as yes. well, which made the whole experience, you know, even that more unique. Yeah, and hopefully there will be other hypnotherapists that hear this and understand that this is not, um, it's just not a technique. It's really all about putting your heart into it, really caring about the person, putting your love into what you're doing. It's not just like, you know, going to get your car fixed you know, and working on, on a, a part. You really, really need to connect because your love really is felt by people. Right. Right? And right. I think that's what you're saying, that there was a, 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 it was a connection there. Absolutely. You might see something on YouTube where someone um, is just changing a part in a car. You can <laughs> feel that. So yes. this definitely felt um, more powerful because of the love. Yes. Yeah. You can feel it. Yeah. Very nice. So do you recommend this for other people? Absolutely. <laughs> Sign up for that newsletter. Yes, absolutely. Now, how far did you travel? Where do you live? I live about uh, four hours from Boston, so in central New York. So I am in Boston right now, and uh, you're living you're in New York. And I, if you're watching this, I am not in Boston right now. Okay, I am a moving target. I'm only in a city for a few days and then I'm gone. So just like Charlene said, the way to get to a session is go to my website, albawyman.com, go to the out of town page and on the bottom of the page, you're going to see a link to sign up to my newsletter. The newsletter comes out approximately once a month, approximately, there's no date or time that I set. Uh, whenever I'm ready, I'm ready. And then I will tell you where I'm holding my sessions. I live in Miami, so I do have um, sessions in Miami, and then I travel all over the place to, to see my my uh, my clients there. So if you're if you're interested, sign up and put me in your favorites so that when that email comes out, you're notified immediately. Because otherwise, you'll get it if it's a few minutes late, they're gone. So I hope that you enjoyed this session. I hope I get to meet you sometime soon. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye. Let's get another hug. Ooh.